You're joking, aren't you? It's the Teesside Chef. Hey, there's some moose loose aboot this hoose today, and don't forget to get some jelly in your belly with this simple but sensational strawberry moose cake. And I'm starting here with one whole kilo of frozen, but obviously thawed strawberries, because we don't need to go to the expense of using fresh strawberries to start our moose cake, but you can use fresh strawberries here if you're impossibly rich. But either way, once these strawberries are blended to a pulp, we need to sieve out the seeds, and although this is a laborious process, it's definitely worth it, especially if you have false teeth. And you can see there is 870 grams of strawberry pulp left after I got cramp in my hand, sieving out the seeds. And I'm cooking that seedless pulp now on a medium heat. I've added 100 grams of sugar to it. And now I'm going to turn this into jelly with 12 sheets of sheet gelatin for our 870 grams of leftover pulp. Once the sheet gelatin is in there, wait a little bit for it to soften in the now hot strawberry goodness before stirring in well and then adding the rest of the sheet gelatin in the same way gradually. And 12 sheets of sheet gelatin is 20 grams. So when it's all in there, we can give it a good whisk up to make sure there are no lumps left. Well, at least I hope not before I cover this with cling film until I need it. But uh, if the danger of tiny lumps of gelatin in your final mousse keeps you awake at night like it does me, you can always sieve the mixture again to make sure. And I do this every time because I'm easily scared by minor imperfections in my final product. And the scales tell me that there is 842 grams of smooth, smooth jelly left now, and that will be a perfect amount for my cake pan size. So I'll split that now by pouring a third of the jelly, or around 280 grams, into another jug, and you'll see why later. And let's get on with our sponge cake base. You can see my pan measures 25 centimetres across, and my paper folding technique here is a bit clever for lining the pan. You just have to fold it into an arrow shape, like so. Place the paper on the bottom of the tin with the point at the centre, and make a note of where the edge of the tin is, like so, and cut the paper at the edge of the tin, like so, and unless I'm very much mistaken, that should fit perfectly, like so, and now I'll stop saying like so, like so, and get on with greasing this cake pan with some softened butter using some of the leftover baking paper, and you only want to grease the bottom of this cake pan, as we'll be making a genoise sponge cake, and we need to keep the edges of the cake pan dry, so the cake can climb up and cling to those edges, to help with the rise, you see. I have 110 grams of all-purpose flour here, to which I'm sieving in 3 eighths of a teaspoon of baking powder. A bit specific, you might think, but uh, if we add too much, the cake will rise too quickly and then sink. And I also added a pinch of salt there before stirring well, and now three medium eggs are going in my machine, on a medium-high speed to be whisked up. These eggs weigh about 165 grams, so if you have small eggs, add in an extra yolk, and if your eggs are massive, take out a little of the white. But a few grams of weight either way won't make too much of a difference. And once we've beaten the eggs to the frothy stage, we can add in 110 grams of sugar, and we'll keep beating on this medium highish speed. Let's not overdo it with the speed, though, eh? Because if you give this too much of the old fast ass, you'll beat too many large air bubbles into the mix, and that is not ideal. And what you're looking for is the mix to turn almost white, and we want to have taken it to the ribbon stage, which means that if you draw a figure of eight with the whisk like this, it should just sit on top of the mix there. And now comes the delicate process of mixing in the dry ingredients. I do this in two stages, and always sieve in the dry ingredients to avoid lumps, and gently folding in with a metal spoon is best, because this mix is as sensitive as a film star whose wife has just been made fun of at the Oscars. And using a big metal spoon is best for the mixing process, as it's less likely to knock the air out that we've worked so hard to get in. So I've just repeated the delicate folding and mixing process, and when you're doing this, it sometimes feels like the dry mix is never going to incorporate properly. But it will be about another 10 billion years until the sun dies, so you will have time to get this done. And once you've mixed all the dry ingredients in, and if you haven't lost the will to live, add 40 grams of melted butter now, and delicately fold and mix that in. And this genoise is the ideal cake for a strawberry mousse cake, because it'll have to be kept in the fridge, but we want the sponge to remain light and soft when fridge cold. And other cakes, like pound cakes or butter cakes, can be too heavy or dry out when kept in the fridge, of course. And I just made sure everything was mixed in properly with a rubber spatula before adding this mix to my lined and greased, or only at the bottom, pan, and a gentle swirl to even out the cake batter before baking for 20 to 25 minutes in a preheated oven at 175 degrees Celsius, that's 350 Fahrenheit, no fan on, no fans, just like me. But I'll tell the three people that are watching this 
that after you've let the cake cool for around 10 minutes, you need to gently release it from the sides of the pan. And if you're worried I'm scratching the pan with a metal knife here, don't worry, because if you're scratching your pan, you're doing it too aggressively. So just simmer down a bit and release the cake from its shackles. And remember, as always, that the cake is baked properly when it springs back when pressed on top and a toothpick insert comes out clean. Flip it onto a grit to cool fully. And once it's cooled, place it back into your now cleaned cake pan as we prepare for some strawberry magic. So here are some fresh strawberries now, and after trimming and halving the strawberries like this, we can go ahead and place the halved strawberries in the pan on top of the cake with the insides of those halves facing out, and this will give us a lovely decorative effect on our final cake, and people will think you're a genius if you serve this up, even though this is fairly simple, as you can see. We'll have plenty of strawberries left over, of course, and you can just chop them up and put them on top of the cake at the end, if you like, as decoration. But for now, we need to get on with a mousse filling, and this couldn't be easier really because all we need to do is whip up 400 millilitres of whipping cream to fairly stiff peaks, making sure not to go too far and turn this into butter. Add in two thirds or 560 grams of our strawberry jelly mix, which is now cooled to room temperature. And fold in until we have a uniform colour like this look and the gelatin in the strawberry jelly will set the mousse to the perfect texture, I promise. And as I pour that in there, it looks absolutely luscious. And don't forget to leave a bit in the pan by accident so you can have a nice mouthful to suck on because uh, it's the chef's privilege to do that, isn't it? So let's give it a good shake to even out the top before setting ideally in the freezer for around an hour until firm. It will take too long in the fridge, to be honest, because we need it to be firm on top like this to accommodate the finishing touch, which is our remaining third of the strawberry jelly mix, which we're just going to pour on top before swirling around to even it out. And as you can see, the amount of my various ingredients have rather pleasingly contrived to fill my 24 to 25 centimetre standard cake pan all the way up to the top. So you know I've tested this recipe fully and it won't let you down. And all you clever clogs perfectionists can pop any air bubbles that might arise from our labours with a toothpick. But a good shake and tap on the work surface also helps get everything ship shape and you'll need to set this in the fridge now for a couple of hours until the jelly sets. Don't be tempted to set it quickly in the freezer as the jelly top will develop a dull mottled pattern, which is not as pleasing to the eye as this beautiful smooth mirror finish. And after quickly releasing the edges from the pan again with my definitely not scratchy knife, we can get the pan off and reveal the stunning finish to this simple strawberry mousse cake, an easy, tasty, light showstopper that can be served beautifully and minimalisty like this, which is how I like it because I don't like fruit really, which is why I'll never be a pastry chef, unfortunately. You can also decorate this with more chopped strawberries if that's your kind of thing. Hey, thanks for watching everyone and check out some more of my vids if you found this one in any way agreeable. Catch us later, eh? Tara.